Westerners. And what I realised was that acupuncturists and homeopaths in particular used a structured series of protocols to, to treat and work with their clients. And what that allowed me to do was start exploring doing the same thing, but using reflexology. So what I thought would be interesting for you this afternoon is to find out a little bit more about how reproductive reflexology works um, and find out also why it is different to normal reflexology. My view is that in, at its best it is one of the uh, best forms of integrative medicine because what we are doing is using uh, science so medical testing to support what we do and also measure the efficacy of uh, reproductive reflexology. So I'm just going to take you through uh, some of the things that we do. You will have the opportunity to ask questions. I think you'll find there's a little uh, chat um, option on your screen. So if you do want to ask questions, please type away and somebody will pick up your message and, uh, and, and we'll deal with that. As, as either as we're going through or when we come, come to the end. So hopefully you'll have some questions as we go through. But um, without further ado, and I've got fingers crossed that this will continue to, to work, we're going to cover three things this afternoon. What is reproductive reflexology? As I was explaining, it is slightly different. What happens at an initial consultation? Because we use an initial consultation process with our clients. It helps us to bring men in, but it also helps us to find out exactly what the issues are and what they are. Then we have a means of being able to deal with them. And that's key to how we work as reproductive reflexologists. And finally, how effective is it as a form of treatment? We, um, as an association, we formed the Association of Reproductive Reflexologists in 2011. Um, what we were able to do as a result of that, because we had a body of practitioners all using the same structured protocols, it allowed us to carry out a small data collection. And um, I've presented this around the world, so I'm happy to share the results of that with you at the end, at the end of the presentation. So what is reproductive reflexology? One of the things to be aware of is that when we are looking at fertility issues, the causal factors are a third male, a third female, and a third joint. And that doesn't matter whether it is fertility issues or a couple that are experiencing repeated miscarriages or um, repeated non-implantation with IVF cycles, or they're having, um, you know, very early, early miscarriages at sort of, you know, just a few days, five or six weeks maybe. It can just as well be male factor as it is female. And that is why it is key to bring in our males as well as our females. The other thing to say here is that um, it quite often is the one thing that men will engage in. They might not want to have reflexology itself, but they're usually quite happy to come for an initial consultation, they think to support their partner, but um, in actual fact, it allows us to um, to to uh, gain information from them about what the issues may, may be. We use something called a preconceptual questionnaire, which I'm going to talk about in just a moment, which we send out to clients beforehand, and it just provides us with a skeleton of information upon which to build our case for them. Okay. Um, so I think that, let me just move on slightly. Oh, you can tell me when the, the echo seems to have been fast working. Okay, I, I'm hoping that the echo has been fixed now. Apparently there was an echo to start with, so fingers crossed that that, that has, has disappeared. Okay, so it hopefully sounds a whole lot better. So what do we do? We use um, very specific and prescriptive treatment protocols for both men and women. And I'm going to give you an example of one of those this afternoon. We're going to look at a female who has uh, a progesterone deficiency or short luteal phase. And we have a very structured way of dealing with that. And, and just by showing you how we work, how we measure, how we measure improvements, um, will give you some idea of how uh, reproductive reflexology works. We also aim to treat any underlying conditions, both male or female. 
So we look at a whole range of conditions. So for women, things like endometriosis, ovarian cysts, uh, fibroids, um, uh, cycle irregular, irregularities are very common. But we also look at things for males as well. So, um, you know, the most common thing you're likely to come up against is um, is males with poor motility, poor morphology of sperm, maybe not enough sperm being produced, and, and, and that's certainly something that we use medicine to measure how effective the reflexology is proving to be. So we will a bit later on, but as I was saying earlier, we use it is a it is a form of integrative medicine. So we are using medical tests to measure the efficacy of reflexology and, and how it is proving to be beneficial for our clients. We, in the main, aim to regulate menstrual cycles. So one of the most common things that uh, our female clients present with is a cycle that is irregular. Now, that's key because if they have a cycle that's irregular, usually it's because the follicular phase, which is the first part of their cycle, is not functioning very well. And that means they'll have no idea when they are ovulating. And if they don't have any idea of when they're ovulating, then they're not going to be able to get their timing. And, and actually it can be something as simple as fixing that bit or that, that will allow them to go on to conceive very naturally and certainly um, prevent the need for them going for more complicated forms of assisted conception. So men me regulating menstrual cycles is very much key to what, what we do. And we also, as I was saying earlier, aim to improve sperm production and functionality. So when looking at sperm very basically, we're looking at how many there are, how well they are moving, so how well they're swimming, um, and how well formed they are. And one of the interesting things uh, that, has, that has come about recently is that um, we're starting to realise just how important male fertility is. It was always thought that women are the, 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 the people that carry the baby and therefore if there is an issue with fertility it will be a female issue but what we now know as i was saying earlier on is that um, causal factors are a third male a third female and a third joint and male fertility has declined by 50 percent in the last 25 years here in the uk and that seems to be being reflected around the world that is the big issue and there are many, many reasons for that. Uh, not just the fact that we have, you know, higher levels of stress, um, but also um, what happens in terms of our food chain, um, in terms of taking care of ourselves, and um, certainly when we come to look at the full cause, and certainly in the book, we're able to address this in much more detail. It is a very complex picture, and it is really key to. Um, making sure that our clients have the best opportunity to conceive it. So when we have male clients that come forward and they, they may come, they have a semen analysis, they may bring a copy of that with them, and we certainly encourage that. And we can see that it is not as it should be. Um, we have a structured protocol that works with them for about 12 weeks, um, and then we suggest a retest of uh, a re retest and semen analysis and we use that then to measure how effective the uh, reflexology is proving to be and what's wonderful is that we get some great results okay we also work alongside all forms of assisted conception so we work alongside medicated cycles, which are drugs that um, are used to promote ovulation in women. We also work alongside IUI, which is intrauterine insemination, that's what that stands for, um, and support couples when they are going through IUI. And we also work alongside IVF and ICSI, so in vitro fertilization is IVF, and ICSI stands for intracytoplasmic sperm injection. It really means that all that is happening is exactly the same process, but the fertilization of the egg has been uh, taken over. So basically what happens in the lab is they actually physically inject the sperm into the egg to improve chances of egg fertilization. And we have very structured protocols that work alongside 
um, all forms of assistive conception. However, what this means is that we have to know um, what the drug is that our clients are taking. So they will be given a, um, a drug and treatment protocol by their clinic, which uh, tells them exactly what drugs they need to take and when. And what we then, what we are aiming to do is turn reflexology on its head and use reflexology to promote the efficacy of the drugs they're taking. If you start um, using reflexology in its natural form, and balancing endocrine systems and reproductive systems, you may well be doing that at the wrong time in their treatment cycle and you would be working against what the drugs are trying to achieve. And if clients have made the decision to undertake IVF for whatever reason that may be, then it's really important that we support them on that journey and we use reflexology to make sure that that treatment cycle is as efficient and as effective um, as it possibly can be. So um, we have these very structured protocols. Again, all of this information is uh, um, that there are a whole range of different uh, uh, forms of assisted uh, conception and we cover the greater majority of them in the book with structured protocols that allow you to work very safely and confidently as a practitioner. We've already talked about the medicated cycles. I think in, in my view what I've observed over the years is that I think it's one of the best forms of integrated medicine because what we are doing is we're using medical testing right from the outset to find out where our clients are and then we are using those tests again to measure how effective this is as a form of treatment. So we've already talked about using semen analysis in men. We know that um, sperm take 90 to 100 days from production to being ready for um, ejaculation and therefore what we have is a protocol that works with them through that entire process so the process is a, takes about 75 days for the production of the sperm and then about another 25 days for them to mature and be and be available and what we have is a protocol that works to support that and of course at the end of that 12 12 weeks or so we would use a, a repeat test and we can see therefore just how effective this is and, and as I was saying earlier we've, we've had some pretty amazing results. Um, we have a closed Facebook page and um, we, which is available for our, our members and um, they are able to share some, some piece of information, they're able to share and get information from each other and also their success stories and we've had two cases recently where um, males were presented with zero sperm counts and they've managed to get them up to five million. Now uh, that's still very low but what it means is that that uh, couple have the chance of having a child that is biologically theirs rather than having to use donor sperm. So that's an amazing thing for that couple. We've also formed a collaboration with uh, Professor Sheena Lewis of um, Queen's University in Belfast. She has developed a test called the Sperm Comet Test. It's what's known as a second generation test. So basically, um, it looks at the DNA in the head of the sperm. And this test is the only way of being able to look at the DNA. And um, what we now have is a means of being able to refer our clients for this test and we also have protocols to have for sperm DNA fragmentation results. The interesting thing with this is that um, uh, the test involves um, dissolving the head of the sperm and releasing the lovely strands of DNA that are inside the, the head of the sperm. And up to 24% uh, breakage of the, the, in the strands of DNA, the egg is able to repair the, the level of damage but uh, beyond that um, it can't and there are a whole range of, of things that may affect that including stress and lifestyle factors but what we have done is developed a protocol again which is in the book which allows you to support men who have high levels of sperm DNA fragmentation. It's a really wonderful test because um, what they found is that uh, males who have high levels 
levels, uh, you tend to get repeated non-implantation issues and, and high levels of miscarriage. So if you can reduce those and your clients can go on to conceive naturally, that's a fantastic thing to do. Okay, so I want to um, talk to you, talk you through a little uh, case study, um, which really just gives you some idea of how reproductive reflexology works. Okay, so the example we're going to use is a female. Um, so we have a female with a menstrual cycle issue. She has a luteal phase uh, deficiency um, and progesterone deficiency, um, and what that actually means is that um, her temperatures and her progesterone levels are not high enough for long enough to allow implantation to take place or to maintain a pregnancy and it is one of the most common things you are likely to come up against. It's diagnosed by a poor project chemistry result. So basically a blood test that is and should be taken seven days post ovulation um, to see what the levels of progesterone are looking like. However, you can get a good result seven days post ovulation and then it can still drop. So we also use basal body temperature charting, which is a very complex, um, it's easy, it is easy to use, um, but it is uh, complex in terms of learning to understand how the charts uh, work, but it is an invaluable tool because you can see exactly uh, what is happening in your client's cycle, what her levels of progesterone are like, um, and also you can use it to measure how reflexology is improving or benefiting that. So I have a, this is actually a client, um, and what you can see is um, a red line that goes across the chart, and where the red line crosses, um, this computer generated chart is indicating that is where uh, ovulation is most likely to have occurred. So what you can see is the temperatures have dropped down and then we started to see a little rise and that little rise has continued and then it goes up even further. The issue is that you can see from day 10, 11 that the temperature is starting to drop and that is basically telling us that um, progesterone is not being produced for long enough. So what happens in the chart is um, at ovulation when the follicle ruptures and releases the egg you get a little drop in temperature. Once ovulation has occurred what is left behind in the follicle is a yellow mass called the corpus luteum and it is this that produces progesterone and progesterone is responsible for elevating temperatures, for um, creating a lovely or, or continuing the thickness of a lovely, uh, lovely endometrium which allows a window of opportunity for a, fer a fertilised egg to implant. So we need to see that uh, staying high enough and long enough. And what we've got here is a a very slow response in terms of it rising. It stays up for a little while, but then it drops very quickly and it isn't staying up for long enough. So we want this to improve. We want to see high temperatures, a nice sharp increase, and we want that, um, uh, we want the progesterone levels to stay high for a little bit longer. So how do we approach this? Firstly, we will treat clients weekly throughout one entire menstrual cycle. And then the key time to treat, particularly for um, progesterone deficiency, is from ovulation until their bleed starts. Okay? And the reason for this is because we are trying to physiologically change what is happening within the body. We're trying to encourage the corpus luteum that has been produced at ovulation to produce more progesterone. So it is the only time we would stimulate the ovary reflex point from ovulation until bleed. What we would also do alongside that, that the clients do a little bit of homework. I quite often set homework for clients and we would ask them to start by stimulating their own ovary reflex points three times daily, again, 
from ovulation until bleed. And that supports the work that we're doing with them. It encourages the corpus luteum to produce that little bit more progesterone. So what we would, what we would then uh, follow on with is ongoing monitoring um, of the situation by doing a number of things. So they may have an improvement in their symptoms. One of the key um, issues with progesterone deficiency is they tend to, to ignore symptoms. They get spotting before they bleed, um, which is a sign that the endometrium is breaking down. And the camera, so here's your okay, I'm just I'm hoping that you can all hear me. And also, um, they tend to experience things like cyclical headaches. That's um, another key symptom with progesterone deficiency. So the first thing you're likely to see is an improvement in their symptoms, and um, and that's key because clearly once the client starts to feel better, they can see the effects that reflexology is starting to. You would also be able to observe changes in their basal body temperature. And I will show you a copy of the chart um, that, uh, that for this particular client that shows that um, we can see the changes taking place. We may also uh, repeat the progesterone blood test, making sure that it is taken seven days post ovulation. This is key because um, quite often it's called uh, by the medical profession a day 21 blood test. And, and they assume that all like should be day 21. However, you have who may have a 35 day cycle and that would mean that they don't ovulate until day 21 and therefore the result would be completely inappropriate and really wouldn't tell us very much at all so it needs to be taken very specifically seven days post ovulation to give us an accurate result so we may well we may well repeat that And here is um, a chart, same woman that we were looking at earlier on. And what we could see earlier was that her luteal phase was, was about 10 days. And what you can see here on this chart is the increase in the length of her luteal phase. It's only that, this is ovulation here, and the temperature has risen in a straight line. We haven't had this sort of gradient that we could see before. We've had a nice clear rise in her temperature. The temperature has then stayed up until the day of her bleed when it has dropped. Okay, So a huge improvement in terms of um, what is happening in her cycle. These charts are invaluable and we spend um, quite some while looking at temperature charts when when we're training and we also as an association spent a whole day we did a lecture day on ovulation charting because they are so important um, in terms of finding out what is happening with our client cycles and also measuring improvements they provide us with a huge amount of information so what you can see here is temperatures dropping when the bleed starts it remains at a slightly lower level Drops slightly just around ovulation. Ease up. This is the the effects of progesterone creating this lovely rise in temperature, and then drops down. Which also tells us is lots of other information around the bottom here. So it tells us about spinal mucus because that's key. You know, are our clients producing the right kind of cervical mucus at the right time in their cycle? And in regulating the cycle, quite often it will remedy um, any uh, cervical mucus issues. Because the majority of the time, cervical mucus is hostile to sperm. It will kill them. It is the wrong pH. Um, and therefore, sperm just die in that environment. They, they, they like a slightly um, alkaline environment. And this is too acidic. However, 
leading up to ovulation, and what you can see here on this chart is um, five days of, or six days of lovely green, um, little green boxes, which show us that the right kind of cervical mucus is being produced at the right time, which is lovely, clear, profuse, stretchy, egg white mucus. Now, what that mucus does is provides nutrients for the sperm to swim in. It is the right pH for them. It provides little channels for the sperm to swim in. It's quite extraordinary. It makes me, I, I never cease to wonder at how amazing our body is, actually. Um, but it provides this lovely um, sperm-friendly environment to allow sperm to get to where they need to be. So you can see this tells us an awful lot more about what is happening with our client's side. The other thing it allows us to, to do, and what you can see on this chart here, is there's a little, uh, a little area, a little uh, row here, which says BD. That stands for the baby dance. It's just a very nice way of, of telling us that they have legs. And actually, this is key, because I cannot tell you the number of couples over the years that I've seen who actually forget that they do have to have sex to have a baby. So this means that we can make sure without having to grill them too much, that they are actually having sex at the right time and um, at the right time when they're producing the right cervical mucus. So this is a fantastic tool and certainly something that you would find useful in your practice. And as I say, we do cover it um, in a lot more detail. Okay, treatment for men aimed at improving any underlying uh, conditions. So uh, you, the thing you're most likely to see are things like prostate conditions in, in males. That's one of the most common things. And we have a, um, an issue with prostate. The prostate is responsible for producing about 90% of seminal fluid. So if you have a prostate that's not working very effectively, um, it is likely to be um, producing seminal fluid that's not very effective and therefore that could be damaging the sperm and be part of the issue. So we have a structured protocol for treating prostate conditions. Reduction of stress. We know that stress interferes with the endocrine system. If the endocrine system is not functioning very well, it's going to affect the production of testosterone and testosterone is, is responsible for producing sperm. So it's really key and there's, there's lots of nice pieces of research out there that just show, show just how much of an effect stress has upon a male fertility. So we would want to improve function of both their endocrine and their reproductive systems and as I was saying we have a 12 week protocol to do exactly that and um, to help our, our males improve their sperm quality the motility, the morphology, so that the formation of the sperm, how well they're swimming. And that really, it's key. And we see some really interesting results, and I will share some of the results with you later on. So we use a weekly protocol. We treat any underlying conditions, first of all, and then we use a weekly protocol to improve the production of sperm and, uh, and the quality of the sperm. The assessment is usually by repeat uh, semen analysis and the interesting thing now is that we're starting to develop uh, links with local fertility clinics so that we can send our clients there for medical testing which helps to support exactly what we're doing. It's quite fascinating times at the moment because we're starting to see quite a lot of changes. So. Initial consultation. Firstly, what we do is we send out a preconceptual questionnaire. That's key because it prepares your clients for what we're going to be talking about. Um, it reminds them of what they're going to be talking about and um, hopefully means that they won't forget to give you some vital pieces of information. And it's a sort of skeleton, really, of um, for you to be able to build your, your case history for your, for your clients. And we also ask them to bring along copies of any relevant test results. So clearly semen analysis for the men. But um, the most uh, important blood 
tests for women are things like follicle stimulating hormone, luteinizing hormone, prolactin levels, estradiol, which is estrogen, and of course progesterone, which we've already talked about. That's really key. And um, we, we talk about this further in the book, what the results mean. It gives us an idea of ovarian reserve, how fertile our clients are likely to be. So um, these results are very useful for us because um, if they aren't so great, then we might want to have them repeated once we've worked with clients for a while. And again, uh, another means of using integrative medicine to measure how effective reflexology is. So, as I've already said, a point, initial consultation is appointment only. Um, we talk a lot about their fertility history, their gynecological history, and any general medical history that might be appropriate to what is happening from a fertility point of view. For women, we ask very detailed information about their menstrual function. And that's really important because it provides us with lots of clues about what might be happening for them. So we might want to know things like, um, uh, how long are they bleeding for? What is the bleed like? Um, do they get PMS symptoms? Do they get ovulation symptoms? Do they know when they ovulate? So we, we talk a lot about their menstrual cycle because, again, it does provide us with a lot of information about maybe what some of the issues are. We also look at um, other relevant information like diet, nutrition, and lifestyle. Um, because these are not only, but they are the things that you can empower your client to use themselves. So if, for example, you've got a male who's, who's going to the gym five times a week and he's building muscles, what we know is that he's diverting testosterone to muscle building rather than sperm. So that would be something we would want to discuss with them and, and change. So um, it allows us to find out a little bit about what's in there general daily living and make some slight alterations to that, that that's going to help to move things forward. Um, we also use something called a repro assessment. So basically it's a means of assessing the feet. It takes about five minutes um, and once you've learned how to do it, it, it is a fantastic tool to use and we use it very consistently um, to measure improvements, to measure improvements in various conditions and certainly when clients are going through assisted conception, measure how they are responding to their, um, to their treatment. And for women, it allows us to um, make sure that the right things are happening at the right stage in their menstrual cycle, because each of the reflex points will feel different at each stage of the menstrual cycle. So if we can't take in place, it leads us to, um, to assume that there, there are some issues there that need correcting. So when we go through um, initial consultation and we've gathered gathered all of the information, we've had a little look at their feet, then we plan treatment with them. And that helps our clients to engage in what we're doing. It helps them to plan, um, to make sure that they can make their appointments. And um, it means they're prepared, really, for what's ahead of them. Okay. So it is a very structured and very prescriptive way of working, but um, it, it works because we are using uh, lots of medical testing to support what we're doing and actually male clients very specifically like that because they can see the changes taking place. So one of the reasons that you are um, here today is that um, Watkins who have published um, the, the book for me, Reflexology for Fertility, have um, made this available I think as a, a special offer and I think you probably will see that as we go. Um, as we go through the webinar, <clears throat> but I know that they've made this available for you today. All of the things that I've been talking about are in the book. Um, there are these um, structured protocols for you to use. There are chapters on um, how to gather the information, what the information means, how to interpret it, and how to use it in your practice. So that I, I hope that if you do uh, manage to purchase a copy, that you'll find it of value to you when you're working with these um, vulnerable but um, amazing clients. I feel very valued to, to be working with clients in this way. 
Um, if you want further information on training, um, we have a range of training courses um, around the UK and, and in Europe, um, and we are exploring taking the course um, over to America and possibly Australia, although it, that probably won't be until next year or early the year after but you can go to the website serenaturalfertility.co.uk and that lists all of our courses there and we also run them via Skype. So finally I just thought you might like to um, see some of our data collection. So we did a small study 180 clients treated by a range of practitioners but all using these very structured um, protocols. Their age range was between 24 and 46, so quite a broad age range. And they had an average number of 11.32 treatments uh, during their journey of trying to conceive. Of those 180, 122 clients conceived whilst they were receiving reproductive reflexology. So we were quite delighted with, with that. A hundred of them conceived naturally and a further 22 were also using reproductive reflexology alongside IVF or ICSI. So that gave us a success rate of 68% we were astounded with. Um, if, you, if you look at the success rates for IVF and ICSI, the success rates are about 25%. And they haven't changed since the birth of Louise Brown. Um, so for clients to, to have reflexology and, and achieve a success rate of 68% is, is really quite simple. So <clears throat> we broke that down into some... Uh, into some of the conditions which I'm going to go through with you. So just to give you some uh, visual idea, uh, the red is the number of pregnancies um, and the blue is the number of clients. The green is natural and the purple is those that had IVF and ICSI. When we looked at some of the conditions, so we looked at couples with no diagnosis, so no known reason for fertility issues, um, those that the uh, women had endometriosis, uh, polycystic ovarian syndrome, amenorrhea, so they had no bleeds whatsoever, they were not ovulating, they had no cycle at all, progesterone deficiency, um, ovarian cysts. And what you can see is um, the pregnancy rate is in blue, but in red. Um, with some conditions, it is known that there is a higher miscarriage rate because of how that condition works. But if we look at some of the um, pregnancy and life birth rates, so for those with unexplained infertility, um, we had a 70% uh, pregnancy rate and a 70% of those live birth rate. Those women with endometriosis, so endometrial tissue, which is growing where, where it should not be growing, um, a pregnancy rate of 65% and a, a live birth rate of 55%. Um, so again, much higher than if clients were ex going through IVF or ICSI. Polycystic ovarian syndrome, which is a very complex condition, um, a 72% uh, pregnancy rate and a 57% live birth rate. There was a much higher miscarriage rate with, with um, PCOS because of the effects on the endocrine system. Amenorrhea, so that's women with who were not having any cycle at all. A 91% success rate in terms of them conceiving and a 70% live birth rate. Um, these, these statistics are all in the book. I did manage to include them so that you could see what's happening. Ovarian cysts was a um, fantastic result, 100% and 100% birth rate so we were absolutely delighted with that but I have to say very pleased with all of these because um, for the greater majority of these couples to have any formal intervention and with a lot of these things it is likely that they would have had to have had um, intervention. 
Progesterone deficiency, 50% uh, conceived, but once they got pregnant, 100% of them ended up with a, a baby at the end of the day. So, And then some male issues. So sperm morphology issues, 100% um, pregnancy rate and a 50% like birth rate for men with morphology. So morphology is how the sperm are formed. Now this could be that there is a lot of maybe sperm damage and sperm DNA issues that we perhaps weren't aware of which would explain the, the lower life birth rate. And sperm motility issues which is 50% um, uh, and 50% again. So the motility is about the sperm swimming. So these statistics we've presented um, at reflexology conferences, um, at the fertility show at Olympia in London. Um, we've been there for the last two years promoting the work of reproductive reflexologists within our organisation. And um, it is a, a huge, huge show. Um, we've been able to present these. Our, our aim is to educate both the general public and also the medical profession in the what we are managing to do is something really quite wonderful for, for these couples. Um, and if we can, well, I always say to my students that if we can prevent one couple from having to go through um, the difficult, um, yeah, then we've done an extraordinary thing. So that's the end of my. Uh, my webinar. I really hope you found it interesting. Um, if you want further information, then please do um, please do get in touch. We're always very happy to um, to answer uh, questions. Um, you can get hold of me through our website, serenaturalfertility.co.uk, or you can contact us through the association website, which is reproductive reflexologists.co.uk and um, if you want further information on the book and its availability then that's available through through Watkins and you will be able to um, purchase it through there. Okay, thank you very uh, much for going listening. To the, oh, oh, uh, we're going okay. to present the offer. So oh, okay, okay. Uh, I'm yeah. going to just introduce Lucia now, who ah, she's the she's book offer. Oh, I think she's going to bring up some information able to and purchase that so I think will it come up on the screen? It should come up yeah, on the screen. So yeah. It should come up on the screen for you. By the way, my name is Eitan. Hi everyone. I'm I'm the the owner of uh, of, uh, of Watkins and uh, it's it's a real pleasure to have Barbara doing this seminar. It's the first time we've done this. So <laughs> it's uh, we were we definitely learned a lot along the way. Thank you for your comments about the echo and the, the, the monitor hopefully uh, it's much better now. So you should have an offer pop up in a sec. Uh, and that's just for you guys. It's a, an exclusive offer. Uh, so hopefully it's working and you will be able to take advantage of this. Once again, it's, uh, it's for a limited time and it's a, a very unique offer. So uh, it is, it is yeah. especially for you. Um, maybe Barbara, maybe you can also, I don't know, share some other random anecdote yeah, yeah, for a sec yeah. while we're at it. <laughs> Excuse me, coughing. Um, I would like to say actually that it, it is a really very, um, a very special offer. I don't think you'll manage to get the book anywhere else at, at that. So um, if you're able to take advantage of it, then certainly do. Um, I think we're going to finish with some uh, question and answer session. So um, we find pop up most uh, most frequently. Um, Harriet's going to come and. Harriet's going to come and talk to us um, and just present some of the questions that we find that come up when we are um, when we are training. So um, I'm just going to introduce Harriet. She's here with me now. So this Hello. is Harriet Coons, who Hello. also teaches uh, the course. Um, and um, you will see when you go and look at the website that some of my name against them and some of them have got Harriet's against them. But we've just put together a few questions that we thought you might like to know the answers. These are the sort of questions we're often asked. So. One of, one of the things people like to know, is, uh, Barbara, is how does the training work and why would it be important for someone to come and actually do the training with you or with me? Okay, okay. The training is very structured. It is run over 
uh, two sets of two days with a six month gap in between. The first set of two days looks at preconceptual care for both men and women and we look at it in great detail. So we've been talking about ovulation charts, we, we also look at um, medical tests and what they mean, so we look at semen analysis in detail, we look at um, uh, blood tests and, and what they mean and what the reference ranges are because they are key to what we do and we look at a range of conditions uh, some of the more basic conditions you're likely to meet you then go away and do some case study work for about six months and then part two looks at assisted conception in all its forms so this is slightly more complicated it is I think I was saying earlier where you turn reflexology on its head so you're using reflexology to promote the efficacy of um, the treatments and the drugs that your clients are taking um, because if you start using traditional reflexology you're going to be working against what those uh, drug and treatment protocols are doing so we look at medicated cycles IUI intrauterine insemination and IVF in vitro fertilization and ICSI and some of the more advanced tests and diagnosis that your clients are likely to want to take. So it is um, very hefty on theory um, and I always say I used to apologize for that but I don't anymore because I think unless you have that then you can't work effectively with the clients. One or two people um, today, Barbara, have been uh, concerned about <coughs> charting and it can be quite difficult to get their women to chart and Doctors will not be keen on charting. So, what would you what would you say about charting? Okay, charting is key to what we do, and I think I was saying earlier that we ran a whole day on a, a masterclass on ovulation charting, and as you could see from the illustration I used, um, it tells us what is happening in our clients cycle so not just when are they ovulating but is their luteal phase long enough are they producing enough progesterone um, are they producing the right cervical mucus at the right time because if that's out of sync then nothing's going to happen um, it also allows us to measure exactly what is happening in terms of the reflexology so um, your clients may come in with a very poor uh, basal body temperature chart using the protocols and you can see the changes taking in their charts so it's an invaluable tool in addition to that it does as i was saying earlier it does mean you can without them having to say anything you can see whether they're actually managing to have sex because the number of clients who forget they have to do that is unbelievable so it's an invaluable tool and what i would say is if you want to know more then either either buy the book or come and do some training with one of us and uh, it is something we're really passionate about um, another question is um, how do you get the men engaged that can be difficult okay this is one we come up against a lot is engaging men and in a way it's why I devised the initial consultation process men like tangible things um, they like to be able to see how things work and one of the things I say about men is they come to an initial consultation being the biggest skeptics but once you've engaged with them and you're able to explain what you are doing and how you're going to do that and what you're trying to achieve and the fact that we use these in what we're doing, they seem much happier to engage in treatment. And then when they start to see the benefits of that, they become the biggest converts. So, yeah, really important. Um, and another one, is it safe to treat during assisted um, reproductive techniques such as IUI and IVF? Okay. <clears throat> I would say in general reflexology terms, no. In fact, I took a call only last week from um, a client who had not been treated by me. She'd been treated by uh, herself into a bit of a tears and she was quite worried that maybe she'd had treatment when she shouldn't have done. And it is a time when, of course, we feel terribly anxious. Going through assisted conception of any kind is a very difficult thing to take on board. And um, what had happened was she'd wrong another practitioner who was not trained, appropriately trained, who had told her that she shouldn't have had treatment. And so you can imagine her anxiety levels rose. And I would say, if you are talking about straightforward reflexology, you should not use it alongside assisted conception. However, the protocols that we use are designed specifically to support 
the effects and the efficacy of the drugs that are being taken. So with with this kind of group reflexology, it is very safe to use alongside all forms of assisted consumption. Okay. Um, do you work with fertility clinics? Okay. I, was, I did touch on this one earlier, actually, which is interesting. Um, I, I do have a fertility clinic that I am able to use to uh, send my clients to. And we do have some of our practitioners who are now starting to um, work in fertility clinics. And again, we've had uh, someone just this week who was contacted um, through our organisation um, and she has been asked to be involved in the setting up of a clinic and will be working with um, uh, a fertility consultant using reproductive reflexology. So um, really fascinating that that is starting to change. And I was also talking earlier about working alongside uh, Professor Sheena Lewis, who's a, a professor of reproductive medicine, and we are able to refer our male clients for um, sperm comet tests. So yeah, it's starting to happen. Which is interesting. Okay. okay, wonderful. So, as I say, if you do need anything else or you have any questions, then please, um, please do make contact um, with either Harriet or myself, either through sarahnaturalfertility.co.uk or through uh, reproductivereflexologists.co.uk, and we'll be happy to answer any questions you might. Thank you very much for being with us this afternoon. It's been a wonderful opportunity to tell you a little bit more about how we work and why we're so passionate about it. And um, I hope that if you're working in this field, you, you get as much enjoyment and, and are as challenged and as passionate as we are about it. And I wish you huge success. Thank you very much for listening. I think we'll say about Chinese herbs is that you will find that if you have clients who are undergoing assisted conception, so IVF or ICSI, um, the clinics will very specifically say that they, they are not to take Chinese herbs. So we don't use them, um, and I don't know anything about them, but I do know that fertility clinics will very specifically say that clients are not to use or take them, either prior to um, their IVF or during their IVF and I think their feeling is that it interferes with the effectiveness of the of the drugs and also there's sometimes with um, with quality control in terms of how the um, the uh, herbs are prepared some of them are brilliant and others not not quite so so um, I you know I think they're, they're slightly concerned about that so um, you know, I think that if you're a Chinese herbalist um, and you know what you're doing, that's absolutely fine. Um, and I'm sure it is a fantastic uh, form of treatment. But um, I would say uh, a lot of clinics say no. Please don't. Uh, please don't take them. Okay. Any more questions? Well, uh, we just want to say we we got the, the the discount code to work news. The the link it should it should be working. And the uh, with the code. Oh, we have another question. Another okay. Question. The question for is how you qualify to become a practitioner, Barbara? What, what you would need? To... Uh, a reproductive. Yes. Okay. So to qualify as a practitioner, you would need to come and complete your training, and your your training, as we were saying earlier, involves two uh, lots of two days plus um, six months of case study work in between times. And once you have completed your case studies and part two of the course, um, then you are uh, deemed to be qualified. Once you've become, once you've taken part one, you can become a student member of the Association of Reproductive Reflexologists. And, and with that goes a lot of ongoing and additional support. Um, but to, to fully qualify, you have to have done all of the course, your case study work, which is involves quite a lot um, and that has to be marked so yeah that and what is qualification do you need to come okay to and to you? actually um, undertake the course you need to be a fully qualified reflexologist with a diploma in reflexology and it needs to be at level three or above otherwise what will happen is you may find that you struggle with some of the um, 
the sort of the, the medical background um, and the anatomy and physiology that goes with the course. So yeah, level three and above, it is most definitely a CPD course, um, but it is a very advanced CPD course.